Hello everybody, we're getting ready for our worship service here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona, and it is now the Lenten season. On Wednesday, it was Ash Wednesday, and our 40-day journey um, of Lent has begun. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. We know that our Lenten season is a focus on Jesus and um, his suffering and death for us and our sins, and then of course we um, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the third day on Easter Sunday. But first we focus on his suffering and on his death for us. Today as we get started on the first Sunday of Lent, we're going to be taking a look at the mercy of God and how desperately we need the mercy of God that's found only in Jesus and his love and his work for us. So we're going to be taking a look at that as we begin our Lenten uh, um, season. We're glad you're with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Hello, friends. My name is Ms. Laura, and I'm the Director of Children and Youth Ministries right here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. Now, you seeing me on this side of the screen can only mean one thing. It's time for us to start another video devotional series together again. And since we're stepping into the season of Lent, it only makes sense that it be a Lenten devotional series. Now, before I tell you about these great devotionals that I've selected for us, maybe we should have a little refresher on what Lent is. Lent is a season in the church year where we set aside and we focus in with great intentionality on Christ's life, his ministry, his suffering and death for the forgiveness of our sins and his resurrection the fact that he is right now preparing a home for us in heaven because he loves us and he wants to be with us. You see, this is a time in the church year where we focus our eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and is right now seated at the right hand of God. Now that we've had that little refresher, allow me to tell you about the incredible devotions that I've selected for us. If you have children in your home, you're going to click and subscribe to the playlist that is titled The Cross and Me. Every day, you and I are going to get together. We're going to read scripture, unpack that scripture. We're going to pray together. And oh, friends, I have a little surprise for us. Be sure to watch right away on Ash Wednesday to see what that is. If you are in junior youth or senior youth, oh, please click on Behold the Man. We are going to be building off of the truths that we learned during Advent. Truths like the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Truths like his name is Emmanuel, God with us. We are going to focus in on his humanity. That Christ had hands and feet and a body just like ours, unstained, untainted by sin. Together, we are going to confess Christ has redeemed us, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won us from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Oh, friends, please join me every day in a video devotion focusing in on Christ's humanity. The final devotional that I've selected for us that I truly hope that you will press play on regardless of if you're watching the others or not is by Lutheran Hour Ministries. It's called The Suffering Servant and it shows Christ walking alongside us. Stepping into our darkness, he becomes the light of men. Oh friends, I'm so eager to pray with you and read scripture every single day using this devotional, The Suffering Servant. So with all that said, there's only one thing left for us to do. Begin our video devotions. Bye, friends. Joy surrounds this holy place For our sins are washed away by the blood of God's own Son, Jesus Christ, the Chosen One. If Christ has set us free, then we are free indeed. 
to worship him with joy in this holy Love unites this holy place As we seek the Savior's face Hearts are gathered here as one Sinners saved by God's own Son The Lord is present here His love is what we share And everyone is welcome in this holy place As we leave this holy place Filled with God's abundant grace May the gentle spirit of Jesus' sacrificial love Be manifest anew In all we say and do Until we meet again In this holy place His love be manifest anew in all we say and do until we meet again in this holy place. Hello, everybody. Welcome to worship today. As we begin the first Sunday of Lent, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel chapter 12. And the Lord sent Nathan to David he came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. And he brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his morsel and drink from his cup and lie in his arms. And... It was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the guest who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. 
Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. And I gave you into your master's house and your master's wives into your arms and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were too little, I would add to you much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Amorites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. For you did it in secret, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child who is born to you shall die. This is the word of our God. Our second scripture lesson is from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified by your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in the truth in inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I will be clean." Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that have been broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. This is the word of our God. Our gospel lesson for today is from Luke chapter 18, beginning at the ninth verse. Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. 
For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the word of our God. We continue now by confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grand peace we pray in mercy, Lord. Peace in our time, O oh, send us. For there is none on earth but you, none other to defend us. You only, Lord, can fight for us. Ah. Scripture alone we pray, O Lord. Hope in your word, O send us. For there is none on earth but you. None other to be friend us. You only Lord, speak truth to us. Grace poured from heaven, send us, for there is none on earth but you, none other to 
attend us. Your only son you sent for us. By faith alone we pray, O oh Lord. Faith be your measure, send us. For there is none on earth but you. None other to replenish. You only can nourish us. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is a 40-day journey that will take us into Holy Week. Remember, when you're counting the days of Lent, Sundays are not counted. They are considered in Lent, but not of Lent. Lent began this past Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. And on Ash Wednesday, we received ashes on our bodies as a sign of humility and repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The ashes on our bodies reflected our humble prayer for God's mercy. The idea of mercy is that you're broken and you're empty and that you look only to the one true and only God for help and for salvation. You realize that you are utterly unable to help yourself. God alone rescues you. The Lord alone helps you. Christ alone fills you with grace and peace and forgiveness. There's a story in King David's life that demonstrates God's mercy for us. King David needed God's mercy after his affair with Bathsheba was exposed. Do you remember that story? King David commits adultery with Bathsheba. She becomes pregnant, and so the king kills her husband Uriah. And then they move in together as if nothing was wrong at all. The Lord had to send a prophet to King David. The Lord sent the prophet Nathan to confront the king and expose his sin. Nathan's words pierced King David's heart and it led him to repentance. We heard the story today in, in our Old Testament passage. David's confession is the basis then of Psalm 51, which is also one of our scripture lessons for today. And part of Psalm 51 says this, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil 
in your sight. King David was truly broken and humbled by his great sin and wickedness and depravity. He rebelled against God and his word. He corrupted and twisted God's Ten Commandments. He murdered a man and committed adultery with his wife. He completely missed the mark of God's holiness. King David was a broken man. He was humbled by God's law. His sin was exposed. He needed God's mercy. Does all of this sound familiar? Not because you already know the David and Bathsheba story, but because it describes all of us. God's holy law is like Nathan the prophet to you and me. God's holy law confronts us in our sins. It exposes our sin. That can happen in many ways. Perhaps it might be your conscience that accuses you of sin. Maybe your sin is exposed in, in a scripture lesson or a devotion or a sermon or a Christian hymn. Perhaps a friend who cares enough about you to say something will confront you. The law of God works in, in many ways to expose your sin and uncover your disobedience. God's law teaches us that, like King David, you have rebelled against God and his word. Like King David, you have corrupted and twisted God's Ten Commandments. Like King David, you have been tangled up in rebellion and immorality and wickedness. Like King David, you have completely missed the mark of God's holiness. The law of God is a heavy hammer that crushes our pride so that we can see our sin. The law of God confronts you, exposes your sin, and leads you to repentance. The law of God is painful. The law of God does for us what Nathan the prophet did to King David. And when the law of God works in your life, you can even use the words of King David in Psalm 51 as your very own confession. You can pray to the Lord and you can say, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. King David's heart was soft towards God's word, and he listened. King David turned from his sin, he confessed it to God, and he fell on the mercy of God. You see, that's what repentance does. Repentance turns you from your sin. You confess your sin to God, and you fall on God's mercy in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalm 51, King David used these words. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Mercy. Mercy is God's compassion and kindness to broken and humbled sinners. God's mercy is found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
God sent his son into the world to take your sin upon himself. He suffers and dies for you and your salvation. Jesus is the only sacrifice, the only payment that God will take on your behalf and for your sin. One way to think about Jesus' suffering and death is that God had no mercy on Jesus. Jesus faced the full wrath of God for your sins. The full fury of God's righteous anger was poured out on Jesus when he suffered and died on the cross for you and for your salvation. God showed no mercy whatsoever to his son so that he can show full mercy to you. Mercy is God's compassion and kindness to broken and humbled sinners. God is merciful to you in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's his promise to you, and you can believe it. And in Psalm 51, God's mercy is described to us in a multitude of, of words and terms and ideas. These are all gospel images. These are all ways to think about God's mercy in your life, his compassion and kindness. From Psalm 51 alone, here are some examples. Your sins have been blotted out. You have been washed thoroughly. You've been cleansed. You've been purged with his blood. You have been washed clean in holy baptism. You hear words of joy and gladness. The Lord has hidden his face from your sins. The Lord has created a clean heart within you. The Lord has put a right spirit within you. You will not be cast away from God's presence. The Holy Spirit will not be taken away from you. The Lord restores the joy of your salvation. He upholds you with a willing spirit. The Lord opens your lips so that you can declare his praise. All of these are gospel words. They are words of mercy, God's compassion and kindness to us. They are gospel words and ideas and terms and pictures to help you understand the mercy of God in your life. God is merciful to you in the Lord Jesus Christ. God showed no mercy whatsoever to his son Jesus when he hung on the cross so that he can show full mercy to you. Mercy is God's compassion and kindness to broken and humbled sinners like you, like me. God's mercy is found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is merciful to you. As we get started now on our Lenten journey, perhaps one of the places that we should start is with Psalm 51 and God's mercy. Use the handout that was given to you today and make King David's words of Psalm 51 Make them your own words. Take them to heart. Trust in God's mercy as you 
turn from your sin, as you confess it to God, as you fall on God's mercy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. God of mercy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your abundant mercy that you so freely give to us through faith in Jesus, our Savior. Help us to live in your mercy, to turn to it in repentance, to rely on it in times of trouble, and to share it with our neighbor. We praise and thank you for your compassion and mercy in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you, you, give you his peace. Amen. Have a great week. Go and live in God's mercy to you. See you next week. My only hope is Jesus. Through his blood he shed for me. Though the earth pass away, this truth will remain. My home is heaven, my healing is the cross, and my hope, my only hope, is Jesus. And I will savor the hope in the grace he gives to me. I will seek the hope for all eternity. I will show the hope to those who have not seen, so others can declare triumphantly, my only hope is Jesus. Through his blood he shed for me. Though the earth pass away, this truth will remain. My home is heaven, my healing is the cross, and my hope, my only hope, is Jesus. And I will share the hope with the lonely and the lost, and support the hope no matter what the cost i will shout the hope hosanna to his name with the choir of heavenly hosts proclaim my only hope is jesus through his blood he shed for me This truth will remain. My home is heaven. My healing is the cross. And my hope, my only hope, is Jesus. My home is heaven. My healing is the cross. And my hope, my only hope, is Jesus. Jesus.